Hello friends, followers and fellow flight simmers, welcome back to another video. In this one we will talk about little nav map and how I use it to plan my flights when I'm flying uh, with old school navigation such as VOR to VOR or using NDB stations etc. This should apply to all flight simulators, not specifically to Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, and little nav map a lot has a lot to offer but if i try to cover them all this video will be probably 45 minutes to an hour long um, the focus today is just to explain the interface a little bit couple options of the map and the window settings like the dark theme and whatnot and we will directly jump into how i use it to plan my flights when I'm using conventional navigation and using the VOR stations instead of a GPS flight plan. I usually use little nav map when I'm flying with GA aircraft and using conventional navigation but when it comes to airliners uh, Simbrief is a one-stop one shop for generating flights for airliner routes. So therefore, this will be specifically focused on VOR to VOR uh, flight planning and that's what I'm going to cover in this video aside from uh, some general information about little nav map. So when you load it in, uh, the software will ask you to scan the scenery library and it will take some time for it to scan all the Microsoft Flight Simulator or your simulator's library to uh, bring the airports into its database. You can update the um, navigates using Navigraph if you have a subscription. And it comes with the light theme, which is white uh, background. And I changed it to dark because I like to use it uh, with the dark settings. And to do that, you need to go to the window style. And night is what you need to select. It usually comes with... I believe this which is super bright for me or I think it was fusion not windows I'm sorry yep it comes like this but I like the dark uh, theme better so that's how you can change the theme to have a little bit dark theme to help with the uh, brightness and your vision or help with your eyes there are a lot of options I'm as I said, I'm not able to cover them all in this short tutorial, but we'll touch base on a couple things. Uh, first thing is the tools. Oh, I'm sorry, the, the Windows menu and map overlays. You can put different overlays, like you can put a compass here if you care for it, or a scale bar down below for the map scale. I usually keep them off. Uh, it gives me more... space on the window and it declutters a little bit a uh, couple options here is to display um, add-on airports if you have any it will force the sim to this uh, the map to show your third party airports uh, like there is one here this is literally not third party for me but maybe it's reading something from the scenery uh, you can display the vor stations ndbs waypoints on the map if you want to uh, the ILS feathers these are these feathers where you uh, see your final fix into the runway Victor, Juliet and Tango Airways you can display those too you can display the uh, flight plan on the map holding or missed approach legs Simulator aircraft, you can bring in the simulator aircraft if you are using online traffic or AI traffic. You get to see them on the map as well, as well as your aircraft. Uh, and you can display the trails of the simulator aircraft uh, as well. So this is uh, going to center the air map on, the air on your aircraft. You also get to see some wind information if you are... Um, if you are curious about the winds at a certain flight level it will display those wind information I usually keep that off uh, for my own use this this one is going to show you the minimum sector altitude or MSA like you see here 9600, 11900 etc 
Um, what else? Uh, you can have an aircraft performance. It keeps the performance of the aircraft and calculates your top of descent and uh, top of climb uh, based on your aircraft performance. And when you do a flight while little nav map is open, you can generate and merge those changes into your uh, performance uh, like merge collected aircraft performance when you create new for the aircraft this takes some time for you to build all the performance calculations for all the aircraft you have but it might be well worth it uh, to do that if you are using little nav map like I do uh, it helps to identify your top of descent all right so this is what I am going to cover in general for little nav map. One last thing, you can change the map source to see different kinds of maps like topo map, street, open street map, carto, light and dark, and there are some offline maps too. These are online maps, so it downloads the map information from the internet. I like this or the open street map is my go to map selection for little map now map um, and yeah that's that's about it so let's talk about how we are going to plan a VOR to VOR flight plan so we will do some random ones maybe I'll generate two for you to see because this is automated you can do it manual but you can automate that too First up, in the menu on the right side, you'll see airports, navigates, procedures. Everything is coming from the navigational database, whether you use Navigraph to update it or it comes with a default database based on the release date. Uh, the cycle will be the cycle that was valid for the release date. So what we'll do is we'll start with searching an airport first. And for this instance, I'm going to search for Oslo, Gardermoen Airport, Econolember, Golf Mike. And when you see the airport, you can right click and set as flight plan departure. And also double clicking the airport will take you to that airport. You will see the stations around. And the wind information is also displayed, which I haven't turned off. All right, from here, um, we'll plan a flight to, let's say, what is a good route to explain this properly? Let's do Göteborg, Eco Sierra Golf Papa. So next up is Eco Sierra Golf Papa to the search box, right click and add as destination set as flight plan destination so we'll see two airports here but no waypoints so this is a direct vfr flight in between if you like to do it this way if you are going to do ifr under the flight plan menu you have a calculate flight plan option this calculates so many different flight plans such as you can select airways and Jet Airways, Victor Airways and generate an airliner flight plan if you want to try for it. But I only use little nav map to generate flight plans for radio navigates. So that's what you need to select. If you want to use NDBs, check this box as well. And then set your cruising altitude based on what aircraft you are using and how high you need to fly. Let's say maybe this is a VFR flight at 8000 feet. And we will click calculate so now as you see the little nav map created and found the VOR stations that we can use to navigate to Göte Göteborg you can manipulate this flight plan looks like we will be taking off from runway 19 right and following a track 199er -er over Golf Romeo Mike VOR staying on that 198 for 66 miles up to let's see here Tango Oscar Romeo and then we'll taking a 
left turn to heading 144 for another 98 miles to Göteborg. So to make it easier to land, if you are not doing a published procedure like a teardrop to land, whether here or there, uh, you can manipulate this to give yourself a straight in landing. What you can do is click the yellow line and drag it to somewhere like that so that you are in line with the runway and that will change your course. So that becomes 144 and then from here you can enter the frequency whether you are doing an ILS or you can visually land in very easily. You can also, let me close this, add more waypoints if you have if you have an NDB or a station that you'd like to use in this flight routing, um, you can add that uh, just for you know fun, I guess. Maybe you want to see this airport and fly over it. Uh, same thing applies, either you can right click to this airport and uh, append airport to flight plan and it will add it to the end. What we need to do is we can move this to the up bit control up arrow until we fix the route. So moving a waypoint is with control, holding the control up or down arrow moves this uh, waypoint in your flight plan routing and then you get different courses. Uh, but this will probably going to be very hard to track using this VOR station on a different course because you don't have anything to navigate. I just wanted to show an example of how you can add waypoints to your flight plan routing if you want to. So from here it is just you flying where you need to go. Um, if you have too many nav aids around this generates a very nice plan to fly from VOR to VOR and enjoy conventional navigation using your nav radios instead of GPS. And that's what I do with the little nav map uh, when I crave for uh, this kind of flight. So, for example, there is an NDP sta NDB station here, and that looks like it is almost straight line to the runway. So you can add this to your flight plan routing. Append. And if you have multiple options, like a GPS waypoint and NDB on top of each other, this will give you a selection. Uh, which will expand and we, will, we want to add the NDB in this case. So clicking that again, it is going to the bottom of the page. We will hold the control up arrow once, twice, and now we have a new routing and we can use this NDB station to practice our uh, navigation skills using NDBs. And then this will take us again from that NDB station to the same waypoint for a straighten approach into the runway. So you need to play with the map a little bit, find what you want to do. Uh, if this is like a sightseeing exploration type of flight, you can, you know, add different waypoints like this and DME here. You can also append this to the flight plan and then do the same thing and move this up. And now you have a different flight plan routing where you fly around, maybe see some cities that kind of thing. But this is how you can easily generate a flight plan routing for your um, conventional navigation flight. And all the frequencies, everything you will see will be displayed down below. So double clicking will show you the information of the nav aid. 115.905 is the frequency we need to tune for this one. Uh, and then we will be tracking that outbound on course 19 or 8 after takeoff to our next waypoint. And you will switch navigation sources in between, like keeping one nav 1 on the active and then nav 2 on this one. And when you start to pick up the signal, you can put uh, this frequency to standby on your nav 1 and switch to this frequency to start tracking that on the same course and then left turn to heading 09 or 9 This time we will tune 113.8 and clicking this will show that information, decimal 85 actually. 
which is this uh, VOR DME station and then we will track that outbound on 0.9er niner niner for 65 miles to our next station when we reach our next station which is the DME obviously this is not going to give you directional information it is just the distance you will get from the DMEs uh, but we can also use the ADF or NDB station here uh, with, uh, with your ADB radio and tune to the frequency of Foxtrot mic which is 399er and then track this ADF or NDB station rather on heading 175 for 33 miles so you should be able to get a signal at 33 miles from the NDB stations it shouldn't be an issue and then when you pass the NDB overhead we can track the next one uh, or track the AB, uh, NDB outbound for on heading 197 for 36 miles until we get to the airport if you keep the little nav map window open it you will also see your aircraft on the map and do some adjustments at the beginning it sounds like cheating but this will help you to understand how to navigate using your nav radios and you will get better at it in no time and never bother with looking at the map after that i hope this helped you guys understand the little nav map and how you can use little nav map to create a flight plan for conventional navigation using nav radios and if you enjoyed the video please give the video a like and if you stumbled upon this video and not a channel subscriber please hit that subscribe button and turn on the notifications it takes a couple seconds but it helps a lot and i appreciate you if you take your time to do that for me please again thanks for being here with me and watching the video and i'll be seeing you in the next one